everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here with you in Exodus chapter 26. And we're going to see the furnishings, the, the make of the tabernacle in a certain detailed way. Because the tabernacle all was really pushed into the community because this is how God's going to be with his people. He's going to bring his presence with his people. They're going to worship him there. The sacrifices are going to be there. The reminder, because the Ark of the Covenant is there. The reminder, because the Table of Presence is there. The reminder, because of the uh, the menorah or the uh, lampstand is there. Um, understanding that God's spirit, God's presence, God's provision, God's jealousy of his people for them to worship him is present in their community. But it's not just at Mount Sinai. That's what's, I think, remarkable about this tabernacle and all the furnishings of it is it's movable. God prepares his people to be on the move, not to just settle in and be comfortable and just be a community right at the mountain, although that is for a time that they are there. He made everything in their possession movable because he knew that he was going to move them into the promised land, into the wanderings. So, Exodus chapter 26, verse 1. says, Make the tabernacle with ten curtains of finely twisted linen and pur blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, with cherubim worked into them by a skilled craftsman. All the cur curtains are to be the same size, 28 cubits long and 4 cubits wide. Join five of the curtains together and do the same with the other five. Make loops of blue material along the edge of the end of the curtain in one set and to do the same with the end of the curtain in the other set. Make 50 loops on one curtain and 50 loops on the end curtain of the other set with the loops opposite each other. Then make 50 gold clasps and use them to fasten the curtains together so that the tabernacle is a unit. Make curtains of goat hair for the tent over the tabernacle, 11 altogether. All 11 curtains are to be the same size, 30 cubits long and 4 cubits wide. Join five of the curtains together into one set and the other six into another set. <clears throat> Fold the sixth curtain, double at the front of the tent. Make 50 loops along the, uh, along the edge of the end curtain in one set and also along the edge of the end curtain in the other set. Then make 50 bronze clasps and put them in the loops to fasten the tent together as a unit. As for the additional length of the tent curtains, the, the half curtain that is left over is to hang down at the rear of the tabernacle. The tent curtains will be a cubit longer on both sides. What is left will hang over this side to the tabernacle so as to cover it. Make for a tent of covering of ram skins dyed red, and over that a covering of hides of sea cows. Make upright frames of acacia wood for the tabernacle. Each frame is to be ten cubits long and a cubit and a half wide, with two projections set parallel to each other. Make all the frames of the tabernacle in this way. Make 20 frames for the south side of the tabernacle and make 40 silver bases to go under them, two bases for each frame, one under each projection. For the other side, the north side of the tabernacle, make 20 frames and 40 silver bases, two under each frame. Make six frames for the far end, that is the west end of the tabernacle. And make two frames for the corners at the far end. At these two corners, they, may, they must be double from the bottom. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Make, they must be double from the bottom all the way to the top and fitted into a single ring. Both shall be like that. So there will be eight frames and 16 silver bases, two under each frame. Also, make crossbars of acacia wood. Five for the frames on one side of the tabernacle, five for, the other, for those on the other side, and five for the frames on the west at the far end of the tabernacle. The center crossbar is to extend from the end to end at the middle of the frames. Overlay the frames with gold and make gold rings to hold the crossbars. Also overlay the crossbars with gold. Set up the tabernacle according to the plan shown you on the mountain. Make a curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen with cherubim worked into it by a skilled craftsman. Hang it with gold hooks on four posts of acacia wood overlaid with gold and standing on four silver bases. Hang the curtain from the clasps and place the Ark of the Testimony behind the curtain. The curtain will separate the holy place from the most holy place. Put the atonement cover on the Ark of the Testimony in the most holy place. Place the table outside the curtain on the north side of the tabernacle, 
and put the lampstand opposite on the south side. For the entrance to the tent, make a curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and finely twisted linen, the work of an embroiderer. Make gold hooks for this curtain, and five posts of acacia wood overlaid with gold, and cast five bronze bases for them. Lots of curtains, lots of directions, lots of detail, and that's what God does for his people. He details out to them what his expectations are for proper worship, for proper boundaries, for being able to know that for years and years to come, hundreds of years, even all the way to the time of Jesus, there's going to be a tabernacle, temple, set in a certain way for the worship of God, but also for the boundaries of God, that his presence is going to come to that most holy place, but yet there needs to be a curtain made in a certain way so that the people will not see the holy and greatness of God and then become dead. But rather, it's set as a boundary for the purpose of when Jesus comes and is hanging on that cross, when he gives up his spirit, when the bread of life, the bread of presence, when the, the one who acts all the spirits of God, Isaiah chapter 11, with the lampstand, the one who actually intercedes and is a mediator, the altar uh, burnt intense, um, gives up his spirit, dies on the cross, the curtain, the boundary that God had set so that God and man would never clash together because of his holiness and our sinfulness. The curtain would be torn in two, top to bottom, so that there would be access to the presence of God as a sinner, but declared holy by the death, and by the bloodshed, by the forgiveness that was won for us when he gave up his spirit, when he died on the cross, so that you would have access to God forevermore. No longer does God just see our sinfulness, but he sees us as saints. Yet he still details and puts together some purposeful places and times and detail of worship. Not necessarily for his benefit, but for ours. Knowing that he is wholly other. Knowing that he is not just another thing that we put into our day, but rather he is God and we devote our lives to him. So yeah, curtains, gold fastens, silver bases. He's forming and shaping a community to be able to worship him wherever they are, whenever <laughs> they are, and being able to know that the number one priority for the community of God is to look to him, is to worship him, to thank him, but also to be led by him. God is always on the move. Where is he taking you this day? To worship him? For him to remind you of what he's done for you? And for you to come to an understanding that wherever we go, whatever we do, it's all out of honor and devotion to God Almighty. Have a blessed day walking by faith in that devotion to God.